Since the horrific Hamas massacre of October 7th, Israel is at war. It is a war that we did not start and we did not seek. Hamas massacred over 1,400 Israelis, babies, women, young girls, young men, children, the elderly, the disabled. He massacred them all. We will not forget that. Hamas also holds over 240 hostages, men, women, children, babies, the elderly and the disabled. Today marks 30 days of holding of a nine months old baby hostage, Kfir Bivas, now is 10 months old. My young boy just turned a year a couple of days ago. Kfir Bivas is holding by Hamas in Gaza. It's unimaginable. It's a crime against humanity with other many children. Hamas commits crimes, war crimes, against Israelis, but also against the Gazan, the Gazan themselves. Hamas cynically uses civilians in Gaza as human shields. They kill their own people. This isn't just a terror tactic. Human shields are a key pillar in Hamas's operations. Until now, over 800 rockets a launch failed that landed inside Gaza and killed many Gazans. Today, I will be sharing evidence proving that Hamas systematically exploits hospitals as part of its war machine. We already shared evidence that Hamas operates command and control centers inside and under <coughs> Shifa Hospital. We decided to declassify and share more sensitive intelligence with you, because the world must take immediate action against that. We are at war with Hamas, not with the civilians in Gaza. We have been calling on civilians in northern Gaza and Gaza City to temporarily move south of Wadi Gaza to a safer area, where away from Hamas strongholds. We are monitoring the movement of the population through our humanitarian corridors and increasing our calls to the areas that have lower rates of evacuation. Here is a recent analysis of our evacuation efforts. Here you can see the millions of times we urged the residents of Gaza to move south. This is an, this is, this is an addition to the effort that my unit made in the media and the social media and in the social networks, in Arabic also, in other languages, on many, on many channels. Here you, here you saw just how big this effort was and still is. As you can see here, Israeli intelligence has been working around the clock to reach as many people as possible. The Israeli Air Force dropped over a million and a half flyers, like these ones here. The Israeli Air Force prioritized our, evacu our, our evacuation effort over other missions. Prioritized evacuation effort over other missions. This is an example of a flyer urging the residents of Gaza to move safer to safer areas. Each new flyer had its own color and to indicate that it was new warning, more urgent call, and updates the corridors to move south. Let's watch how it looks like. Mm -hmm. 
ايضا وصلني الان يعني احد المناشير وهو هنا سقط في مستشفى الشفاء والذي يقول به الجيش الاسرائيلي الى سكان مخيم الشاطئ جيش الدفاع يطالبكم بالاخلاء الفوري من الشمال القطاع الى المنطقه الانسانيه وهذا طبعا نحن تعودنا عليه في تلك الايام الماضيه هذا احد المناشير التي القتها الطائرات الاسرائيليه والتي تطالب سكان منطقه مخيم الشاطئ بالتوجه الى المنطقه الجنوبيه من القطاع as you see, a journalist showed the IDF flyer explaining it to its viewers in Arabic. Gazan listened to approximately 6 million recorded phone messages in Arabic. I will now play you for you one of the recorded messages that we sent to the residents of Jebalia. Jebalia, this place that civilians were being hauled by Hamas, urging them to evacuate south. Israel wants civilians to move away, to move from Hamas strongholds. Gazan should not be used as human shields by Hamas. We made almost 20,000 personal calls, people from Israel on the other side of the line, live phone calls to neighborhood by neighborhood to key people in those areas, including Jebalia. Like this phone call here, we made in the last few weeks to a resident in Jebalia. <laughs> Hamas is weak without human shields. Is weak. Hamas is actively stopping Gazans from moving to a safer area. Here is a call we declassified with a resident of Gaza. He's giving a testimony of how Hamas prevents Gazan from evacuating. <coughs> I now want to show you how Hamas blocks, blocks the road. Hamas tries to prevent Gazans from moving south. They put roadblock to stop civilians from leaving Jabalia. I want to be clear, the IDF adjusted our ground operations to keep the corridors from the north to the south open. But Hamas is attacking our forces, like yesterday, that opened this corridor. This is why we had to stop the corridor yesterday. Hamas was attacking our forces with anti-tank missiles on this road, preventing the corridor to be open. Hamas tries to prevent Gaza from moving south. This is what we are doing. Now let's look at what they are doing. We, now, we know Hamas hides behind civilians in Gaza. Hamas places forces and weapons inside, under, and around schools, mosques, homes, and UN facilities. Among the worst of Hamas war crimes is the use of hospitals to hide their terror infrastructure. We already revealed Hamas command and control center under, under the Shifa hospital. 
Now let's talk about two more hospitals. Hamas uses hospitals to disguise the war machine is systematic. The Sheikh Hamed bin Khalifa Al Thani Hospital is located north of the Gaza city along the coast. Its construction was founded by the Qatari government and it's called the Qatari Hospital. Here you can see the IDF soldiers exposing a tunnel opening. This is part of an operation, a ground operation that was conducted on the hospital and revealed a tunnel that was being used for terror infrastructures in the Qatari hospital. If it wasn't enough, this tunnel, if it wasn't enough that we expose the tunnel under the hospital, the terrorists also shoot at our soldiers from within the hospital. I will now play a video for you taken recently from Qatari Hospital. You will see Hamas terrorists firing at the IDF soldiers from the inside of the hospital, a hospital funded by Qatar. We already released evidence of Hamas use of Shifa Hospital to shield its terror complex. And Hamas uses the Qatari Hospital for terror as well. Today, we will also release evidence that the Indonesian hospital is being used by Hamas to hide the underground command and control center. This is an Indonesian hospital. This picture was taken in 2023. You can see the hospital structures in south of the, uh, of the roundabout of both sides of the road. The hospital is located in northern Gaza between Jebalia and Bet Hanun. The construction of the hospital was funded by several NGOs from Indonesia. I will show you the reason why they built the hospital there. This picture here was taken in, 20, in, in 2010 when the hospital was under construction. Take a look here at the area in red. They were Hamas terror outposts. Unsurprisingly, Hamas built a hospital on top of their terror infrastructures. Those outputs of Hamas had underground facilities before they started to construct the hospital, the Indonesian hospital. There are, there are three important areas to point out. The first area is the collection of cement materials here. You can see here arches. These archers are very, very unique. It's a unique structure. It's only used for underground terror facilities for Hamas. These cement archers are not needed when building hospitals. They are used to build underground city of terror, an underground metro of tunnels. We have watched Hamas use these archers to build tunnels for many years. Instead of building homes for Gazans, he built this metro over hundreds of kilometers underneath Gaza and underneath places like hospitals and mosques. They are building under underground terror infrastructures for Hamas. Here you can see the entrance to an underground tunnel. Hamas used this tunnel to access their command and control complex under the hospital. This is all satellite and, of course, all these images and intelligence and more was shared with other agencies to confirm what I'm showing you now. Now let's, took, let, let's take a look at the hospital in 2020. You can see that the cement materials, including the arches, are no longer above the ground. Done. It's all underneath the ground. This is a satellite image of the hospital complex taken after the massacre of 7th of October. I am going to zoom in on the area here, okay, across the street, only 75 meters, 80 meters to the hospital. Here, the IDF identified a launch, a launch pad 
meaning they launch rockets from here. I want to repeat it. They launch rockets on Israel 75 meters from an hospital. Why? They know precisely that if Israel will airstrike a launch pad like that, the hospital would be damaged. And this was part, of course, of the outpost before in 2010. This architecture of underground facility, including launch pads. Here you see layer by layer how Hamas systematically built the Indonesian hospital to disguise its underground terror infrastructure. And we see that they use the area around the hospital as a base of, for terror against Israel today. Now I want to reveal evidence that Hamas steals fuel from the Indonesian hospital. Next, we will listen to a phone call from November 2nd with an official closely affiliated to Hamas terror organization. Let's listen. <laughs> This phone call and others can be authenticized and verified by other agencies that we send them more materials that I cannot reveal here. The agency of the United States and the United Kingdom will verify these materials. This call intercept that we intercepted reveals a few things. While Hamas screamed to the world about a lack of fuel, there is no shortage of fuel in Gaza. Hamas has the fuel. It's in the hands of Hamas. The leadership and the member of Hamas are lying. Hamas has fuel. Hamas stores this fuel underneath hospitals in Gaza, the very hospital that Hamas tells the world running out of fuel. I will now share one last audio recording with you that we intercepted. Hamas Hamas moves fuel from the hospital to terrorists, okay, in Jebalia, meaning moving it from Shifa to Jebalia, from Shifa, from Shifa hospital to Jebalia, the same Jebalia that Ibrahim Beari, the murderous commander, was killed. They move fuel to Jebalia because Jebalia is a terror center. They steal the fuel from the hospital, the fuel terror infrastructure. Finally, I want you to see Hamas in their own words. <laughs> لأنه لا نملك ما ندفع به عن أنفسنا من القتل والاستهداف هذه الأنفاق من أجل أن نحمي أنفسنا من الطائرات نحن مقاتلين من الأنفاق 
أما أما القطاع غزة فأنت تعلم والجميع يعلم بأنه 75% منه لاجئين واللاجئين هو مسؤولية الأمم المتحدة في حمايتهم مسؤولية الاحتلال في أن يقدم كل تبع الاتفاقية جنيف الدولية أن يقدم لهم كل الخدمات وهم تحت الاحتلال This is Abu Marzouk, just from the 27th of October. Human shields are a key pillar of Hamas terror operators, operations. Hamas systematically exploits hospital as a key part of its war machine. This is the murderous organization we are dealing with. Hamas doesn't even try to hide it. They say it out loud and it's loud and clear. Here is Hamas leader Abu Marzouk a few days ago on TV interview, confirming that Hamas builds tunnels in hundreds of kilometers to protect its terrorists. Who's above? The innocent civilians are above. But more than that, he admits that Hamas is not responsible for the civilians in Gaza. It's the world's problem, they say. They don't even hide their logic of using human shields as a part of their terror and war machine. Hamas is hiding behind hospitals. Hamas is sickly exploiting hospitals to disguise its war machine. Our war is with Hamas, not with the civilians of Gaza. We will not accept Hamas' cynical use of hospital to hide their terror infrastructure. I want to repeat. We will not accept Hamas' cynical use of hospitals to hide their terror infrastructures. Hamas exploitation of hospital must come to an end. Be happy to answer your questions. Matt River, ABC. Uh, um, just to start here, um, when it comes to what you're showing here, I, I think part of the issue when it comes to, to journalists like us is that we're hearing you say this, but is there more, more things that you can do to allow the media in our situation to go in and listen to some of these phone calls firsthand. I mean, I hear what you're saying, you're putting these things out there, but I think for us, we would love the ability to be able to verify ourselves. I know you're saying the United States can verify this, the UK can verify this, but what about members of the media being able to go in and listen to some of these phone calls and, and be able to, to do that ourselves? We are, I'll be ready to examine uh, what, whatever we can uh, off record to provide, as long as it doesn't uh, uh, bring us uh, to a problem in, in intelligence during a war, but we will provide everything we can in order to show you, and this is the on record, on camera, with questions. This is what I can share. We're sharing a lot of more of this material, more intimate material, with all the agencies in order to be authentic and verified, like the El Ali El Mahamadani, that we took our time to make sure we're credible, we're correct, we verified it, we gave it to the agencies to make sure that we're right, and only then we came out publicly. And let me just follow up here. I mean, I, I, I see what you're saying.